actually what is the real difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous when do you call a reaction homogeneous when do you call a reaction heterogeneous see the phase difference is lkg answer now you have graduated so i think you know the correct answer you have to tell when do you tell whenever there is no mass transfer limitation in any phases then you have the homogeneous that means again i told you know american society you don't have to see another molecule for getting married right yeah immediately it is available right you don't have to go to other house search and uh, parents and all that so but in solids what is really happening i have two solids coming together for reaction both are pure but reaction can automatically take take place why because those molecules are not movable right so that is why what you have to do use you have to break this uh, solid you have to break this solid make them very fine powder if possible molecular lever you can never do it so then you mix them perfectly and then bring to temperatures high temperatures then the molecule start diffusing a little bit that's called self diffusion okay so with that only it will react that's why solid solid reactions are very very slow fastest reactions are gas okay so that is why again please don't tell what is the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous means one phase two phases over that stage is over you have to learn something new okay you can tell that uh, anyone asking if there is uh, uh, what is the definition of homogeneous if you say that all molecules i mean whatever number of reactants that are available if all of them are easily available in one phase then you have homogeneous okay heterogeneous that is not possible necessarily from one phase to the other phase the molecules have to move right so if you have coal and oxygen by keeping coal in one room and oxygen in one room you cannot have even you have same room but if there, if there is no sufficient temperature the reaction temperature still coal may be there air may be passing over that still you don't have reaction that means the mobility of uh, the uh, molecules is not enough for the reaction to take place or activation energy what you say right yeah so that is why you have to bring them to the reaction conditions environment and then automatically the uh, the molecules will move and the reaction takes place that is the difference now actual difference you want to ask something no you you blue banian you only i am talking about you straight no you said like this so i thought you are asking yeah so kalpana you mean the yeah that is a good question in fact you know uh, during the reaction if it is remains homogeneous we take them as homogeneous right but immediately uh, when the reaction is taking place there may be a condition where the products are forming as precipitates okay solids like for example gas it cannot happen but mainly it may be happening in only in liquid phase so if that is not affecting your rate of reaction then you can call that as only homogeneous okay so the, in fact that is uh, that is the point which i have to also tell i have forgotten at that time when i was talking so now that is a good question where during the reaction if we, the molecules are free available even though there is a phase change that means the product when it is formed automatically it is precipitated you may be stirring it but i think still you have at molecular level the availability of molecules for the reaction to take place okay so that is why you can still take that one as homogeneous only good so that is what what we have discussed here uh, with this diagram and we have also identified what are called catalytic reactions and non catalytic reactions now we have to identify in gas liquid mostly what is the kind of reactions you will have what kind of reactions you will have in gas liquid uh, are they catalytic reactions or are they non catalytic reactions mostly there may be one reaction you know very peculiar reaction where you have a liquid a gas liquid right the first one gas liquid so liquid acting as a catalyst or gas acting as a catalyst is it really possible generally so most of the time for gas liquid can see non catalytic reactions right okay so for liquid liquid no No. You think I say you are only just listening to me. You have to also think. You have to question me. You have to think. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Both possible. Good. Answer is right. But why? What 
Autocatalytic is homogeneous, can be homogeneous. Autocatalytic is the product acting as a catalyst. Okay, now, we want to use as external uh, liquid as catalyst, both are liquid, right. So, there are many reactions where there are non-catalytic reactions and also catalytic reactions where one of the liquids can act as catalyst. Okay. I think the nitration reactions are like that. Okay. Nitration reactions are like that where yeah, you have to uh, you know if there is a catalyst, that catalyst in the form of liquid okay, will be this liquid 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 reaction. The moment you put solid here, then it, beca it becomes three phases. If the catalyst is in, uh, in solid form, then you cannot take this, you have to go here. Now, you have three phases, no solid. So, that is why when you are talking about catalyst here, that catalyst must be one liquid, but it should be either miscible in this or in this. Okay. Then, uh, the reaction will take place at the interface and most of the time, that is why one of the liquid is dispersed into very, very fine solid, uh, fine uh, droplets. The other liquid is continuously sent and you have to now see in which phase your catalyst must be dispersed, either uh, dispersed phase or either continuous phase. right? So, that is the condition for uh, non uh, the catalytic reactions in liquid liquid. It is possible, few reactions are there. Then what about liquid solid? Yeah, liquid solid most of the time, where is my liquid solid? Gas liquid, yeah, liquid solid can be non catalytic or catalytic because for the for example, that solid can be a catalyst over that you send liquid, but now this is one liquid. So, that liquid is uh, you know the reaction is taking place on the surface of the catalyst or inside the particle. So, that is possible. So, you have few reactions which can be liquid solid either catalytic or non catalytic. Okay. Next one gas solid, most of the things are catalytic and also of course, non catalytic reaction. Give me one example of gas solid non catalytic, which I have told also just now. Rusting, ah, rusting. Combustion. carbon burning, carbon burning. Combustion. combustion, I think you know that is very easy for imagination. No? So, carbon burning even rusting is not uh, that easy to imagine, again your mind has to go to cycle and all that. But here carbon means burning immediately comes to our mind, because all of us thousands of uh, times seen this burning. So, that is the reason and many people would have not seen the rusting, rusted uh, cycle. Okay. So, that is why that it takes time. Solid, solid, most of the time it is non catalytic. Solid, solid. I mean, how do you get a solid, one solid catalyst, another solid uh, only, but how do you make it? How the reaction can take place? Impossible. And you know, one example can you give for solid-solid reaction, which you see every day almost, if you take coffee. That, that product you use, because of the solid-solid reaction. Huh? Chinese are very famous for that. Chinese are very, very famous. I have given you so many clues, I say. Huh? What is that? Roasting of what? Coffee beans. Huh? Coffee beans. Uh -huh. No, it is not, I am not talking about coffee. <laughs> when you are taking coffee, use this product. And I gave the clue, beautiful clue, Chinese. Chinese are famous for what? Chowming. <laughs> what is that? Chowming. Chowming. Huh? Chowming. Chang. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you see, because you are interested in junk food, you remember only noodles. Okay, and noodles are kept where? In a plate. Ceramic. What is that? Ah, ceramics. Ceramic. Ceramics and glass chains are well, long time they have developed the technology. The best ceramics in the world available only in China. And you know how they uh, how do they do it? Solid solid reaction. And solid solid reaction has not come to the level of gas liquid reactions or gas solid reactions or liquid liquid reactions because they are very difficult to study. Okay. So, that is why I think you know this is uh, one of the very very difficult reactions, very uh, slow reactions, and you need I think you know China they take that one as an art 
the ceramics. It is not only simply they are producing the plates, they have produced that plates with beautiful designs, you know, paintings on that. You can just imagine how they are doing it and lifelong it will be there unless you break it. Okay. So, the painting will never go, the glossiness will never go, it is wonderful. Right? You would have seen no, many movies of uh, uh, Jackie Chan, where fighting will be only how to save one jar, that fellow will come and hit, he will jump and then catch and again that fellow will come and hit and this fellow will go and then catch the uh, jars, no? you have not seen Abdul, yeah. seen no, yeah, we would also see movies. <laughs> yeah, because I appreciate the Chinese uh, you know, jars, not Jackie Chan. Okay. <laughs> You appreciate Jackie Chan and also try to see what is that he is trying to hold there. In many movies, he will never you know allow others to break uh, Chinese uh, treasure, that is Chinese treasure really. <laughs> okay. So, that is the one. And gas liquid solid can be, yeah, can be both uh, catalytic or non-catalytic. Okay. Uh, uh, I think mainly it is catalytic, you know, when compared to even non-catalytic. Okay. Uh, this is again technological interruptions. Yeah, so this is uh, we have to put brackets here. This also is very important for us. Then we should know that, as I told you, the, the design of non-catalytic reactors and the design of catalytic reactor will be totally different. So that is the reason. Okay. So now next one, because you have so many possibilities and the rate of reaction when you are expressing for homogeneous, it is very very easy. Right. So normally we write for an ith component because a then you can replace this one by a okay yeah my uh, equal to normally i will also write the equation vi sorry v dna by dna by dt yeah okay dna by dt equal to uh, i am writing this in terms of moles moles of i of course uh, if i don't put here it is formed but because negative i am putting it is reacted per unit time per unit volume that is the definition okay yeah Similarly, we can now write for all other things that are possible. I told you this is the simplest one. This is the simplest one because volume means here we are talking about volume of the reaction mixture. Okay. Normally, we do not waste our reactor uh, volume. So, that is why when you calculate this, we also think that that is the reactor volume. Actually, it is a reaction mixture. Right? If you are conducting slightly at high temperatures and if there is some vapor coming and all that, so, that is why you will again allow some kind of uh, vapor space above the liquid. Okay? That is only engineering judgment, how much you have to leave only depends on the temperature, how much vapor is produced and what is the vapor pressure and all that. Okay? But what we are talking here, this volume is volume of the reaction mixture. Okay? So, now when I go to uh, different things now, let me, let me take very widely used is gas solid. Okay. Gas solid is very, very, so many reactions are there in the industry. Some of them can be catalytic, some of them can be <coughs> non catalytic. So, now we will use that one for uh, you know deriving, writing some equations that is homogeneous, this is heterogeneous. So, many possibilities are there. So, now based on, based on volume of voids. You have to be very clear in the reactor. Okay. So, if I write here again I, yeah. So, moles of I converted per okay, per unit volume per time. Right? So, this can be of course, meter cubed or second, you know, generally uh, meter cubed per second. I think in uh, chemical engineering literature, you get these values, uh, the, 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 those units in various forms. 
right? And if you take some of the books, deliberately they give also feet cubed. Okay, there will be moles feet cubed and all that because I think this is required for us. You, know, you you cannot say that yes, I I don't understand anything other than SI units. You should be able to convert one from the other. Okay, otherwise consistently use only one uh, system so that you will get the volume also in that particular system. If you are using only everything in FPA system, finally the volume should be in terms of feet cubed. Okay, so like that. So so this is the one, and you see here we are now basing on voids in the reactor, and that much you should know. We have a packed bed, and you pack all the catalyst particles, for example. In between the particles, you have some voids, and inside the particle also you have some voids. We are not talking about that. We are talking about only voids. Okay, tell me for packed bed, how much is the void edge? Point four. Huh? Point four. Point four. Point four. Yeah. Any 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 other guess? I am not saying it is right or wrong. It can be wrong also. External void. External. Actual what is what I am asking? Yeah. Point five. No, you don't, you don't answer because I think you know we simply say point three, point four. That is strictly valid for what? Ah, Rashi Green means you know K K will uh, use A K forty seven. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. For Rashi Green, he is point four. What is this? I say two courses, B Tech and M Tech. I am talking about them. Okay, PhD scholar. Yeah, I don't know whether you are PhD scholar or M Tech. PhD. Yeah, you see. Ah, so your Rashi Greens are always having only point four. Point four for what? You know, this is what I say. Still, we have only LKG knowledge only. We don't have more than that. Our brain is not expanding. Yeah, tell me. You are just keeping quiet. Jahanvi, point four. He said for what? Point three five to point four. Which packing? And he said Rashi Green. I said no. You can guess there are many packings, no? Oh my God! Yeah, Sushmita. No idea. Huh? What is that? HTP hexagonal packing. What is that packing? Hexagonal. HTP. Hexagonal packing. Huh? Hexagonal packing. Oh my God, Margaya. No one will make hexagonal pa packing. <laughs> How can you make hexagonal packing so easily? Regular and irregular packing. Very nice answer. What is irregular? What is regular? <laughs> Tell me. Regular means we place it according to our wish, like what in what in which manner we want. Irregular means we just dump. Dump. That is called random packing. Uh, random okay. Packing. Yeah, it is not because in regular and irregular packings. Okay, there are thousands of variations, but this point three to point four will only come for one uh, glass beads. Okay, glass beads can be spherical, cylindrical. They can be Rashi rings, you know, type, you know, with hole. Many things can happen. Glass beads are huh? strictly for spherical particles. Please remember when you say point three point four. Okay, strictly for spherical packings, and as you said, I think you know Rashi rings. Rashi rings will have how much? Any other? Uh, any other value? Point six. Okay. Yeah, and bell saddles also around point six. Okay. So that is why you know uh, the, we have various packings, but except spherical part, uh, packings, all other things will have higher void edge. Okay. Good. Yeah. So that is what is the base. Uh, you know, uh, th this equation is based on this is voids, right? Okay. So then next one is. Yeah. So we can also based on volume of volume of catalyst particles. so again this is of course i can put here uh, dash double dash i yeah equal to 
moles same thing I converted per volume of solids per time. Yeah, so based on based on weight of the particles. Again, I can write here. Oh, sorry. Okay. Moles of I converted. Then, uh, yeah, weight of catalyst, cat wool, right? Per time. Good? Yeah. So, another one can be based on external surface, surface of particles. This again minus oh, 4. moles of I converted per surface area per time. Yeah, not able to read. The first one is always moles I converted. Surface area, yeah, of what? Which particle? I have only one particle, catalyst. That is why I said you know heterogeneous gas liquid gas solid system. Okay? Yeah. So, you have only th that is uh, solid particles. Yeah, you, you will have definitely all these doubts because you have to specifically mention on which you are going to write the rate of reaction. This is very important. Please do not uh, take it away, oh, very simple uh, definition and all that. No, because finally, what you get is only this one in the reactor, I mean in the reactor design expression when you are calculating like volume of reactor you calculate. right? So, if you base it on volume of reactor, then you will get volume of reactor. If you get weight, you will get weight. If you get volume of solids, you will get volume of solids. Yeah, you are asking something? Oh, yeah, yeah. you are right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you are right. Based on weight of the particle, very easy for me to write W and this is wrong. Yes, thank you. Huh? Of solid particle or catalyst catalyst the particles. Catalyst particles. Yeah. Okay. And all solids are catalysts inside the reactor. Okay. So, I mean, when you are talking about packet bed, where I have gas solid catalytic reaction, we have taken only one example gas solid catalytic reaction. Right? Like, for example, ammonia conversion or sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide with using vanadium pentoxide. So, many definitions are existing only for that. Still, this is not the end. You can also, if you are crazy, you can also base it on voids of the voids inside the solids. It is not inside the bed. Inside the solids only, I told you, uh, sorry, uh, uh, inside the bed only, I told you that we have around 0.4, point, point 0.4 for uh, spherical particles okay? and uh, you know 0.6 if you have rashic rings and by the way, Catalyst particles also are made in the form of Rashig rings. How does a Rashig ring look like? Never seen. What is your name? I have forgotten. Just huh? Puja. Yeah. Puja, you never seen Rashig ring? How many people not seen Rashig rings? Frankly. Otherwise, I will ask you to come and draw here. How the Rashig ring look like? Huh? You are not also not seen. Merit? No. Huh? Oh my God. Yeah. So, okay, can you tell them how, uh, uh, how Abdul, how does the rash green? You also not seen? Uh, yeah. AC tech, uh, how I say? I think they have lots of, they always have always only rash green only holes. Okay. No, another? No. <laughs> I am not asking whether you have seen or not, but in AC tech, rash rings are not there. 
balsamics are more difficult to make. Rashi rings are very easy to make. Okay, rashi ring is just a cylinder with a hole. Okay, like you know, pen. Uh, yeah, this one you, you just cut here. Take this portion. That is rashi ring. This is the simplest one because you are trying to utilize. If it is only cylinder, is closed, you know, right? So then area available for reaction is. Yeah, only the external surface. But now you put a, a cut here and cut here. If it is hollow, uh, thickness may be of course it should withstand the weight and all that. Then in internal surface are also also is uh, available for reaction. So because internal volume also is available, that is why it goes to 60 percent. Point six is the Y D. Okay, and some people also use straight uh, like uh, like this exactly. This is the catalyst. It is a cylinder. But there is no hole. Okay, cylinders are very easy to manufacture in the industry for uh, as catalysts. Spherical particles are very difficult to manufacture on that scale. Yeah. Very fine powder, no? Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, are you uh, MS color, PhD color, or PhD? We don't do that experiment in your uh, lab. Which lab you are in? Huh? Oh, Tanmay Basak. Yeah, I think you know in that um, transfer operations lab, you take a cylinder and then you you try to pour that powder and try to, try to find out what is the voltage. Sir, that is basically the slot in the bottom. Uh, in the bottom, uh, I can what I can do is I can just place two support or you know two pools, the ceramic. Pool. You do whatever you want, but they tell me what is the voltage. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. No, that is why many people think that the people who are working, uh, who are doing the experimental work, the theoreticians feel that people who are doing experimental works are like laborers. Okay, but I think laborers definitely should have much more brain than the theoretical people because theoretical people nowadays that theory you are not proposing E equal to m c square. Okay, you are only trying to solve some mathematical equations. But experiment when you try to do, how many things you have to imagine in your brain before you start the experiment? Even nut and bolt you have to choose. Okay, literally you have to choose in our department because we don't have nuts and bolts now in the department. Okay, we don't want to have any nuts. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So I think you know it is very. It is not that easy. Everything you have to imagine. How do you do this experiment for the experiment to be done? That is why many people. Take the easiest route. Go to computer. Take one differential equation. Solve. Change boundary conditions. Submit. The real engineering thing will come only when you are able to verify whatever theory you have done. You know, in your uh, thesis with an experiment. So that is why most of the engineering PhDs or MS, you know, uh, research problems must be having both the components: theory and experiment. Otherwise, you are not an engineer. In fact, it happened when they go for uh, interviews here. You know, in uh, what is that placement? People asked, you, "Have you seen? You know, what is a rotameter?" They said, "No, we have never seen a rotameter." They were very angry. The people who are working theoretically, okay, they were very angry, and they wrote this big letter to director at that time. It was, I think, 15 years back or so. Okay, what is this? What kind of training you are giving in a chemical engineering department? They have got yeah, M Techs and PhDs, but they never seen a rotameter. Okay, you may ask, so what? So why, if I have not seen rotameter, what will happen to this world? Nothing will happen to this world. But only thing is, you will not get the job. <laughs> Correct? No, because they want, they they definitely want some information about rotameter. I think some flow meters. Okay, so that is why, yeah, that is a good question. I think I also told you when you put very very fine powder, what should be the wide edge? It is nice spherical particles. You will get that. But if you have powder, that too irregular powder, you may not have each and everything as perfect uh, sphere. Uh, sphere, then definitely it will be 0.2, 0.1, it's much less. But it will be challenging for you to determine exactly what is that. Okay, but because you are using very very fine powder, for example, talcum powder, you pack it, and then or when ta when talcum powder is put in the in that container where you use with the holes perforations, you know. You spray there and all that, yeah. So then, what should be the 
wide edge there. That depends on again pressure, how much pressure you are applying when you are packing that. So, that is not that easy to determine. That is why powders we never use in a packet bed. Right? We, we use only minimum 3 mm particles, 5 mm particles. Of course, in industry, as I told you, the catalyst, uh, if they are using spherical, even then it will be half an inch particles, 10 mm, 8 mm, 6 mm, like that. Maximum, I told you, 18 mm. 1 inch, 2 inches, no one will go, because simply we are losing surface area. But if you are going to lower and lower, 1 mm, 0.5 mm, 2 mm, the pressure drop increasing, because you know, normally, theoretically, there should not be any change in void edge, if you have perfect spheres. But who can make a perfect sphere? Even God cannot make perfect spheres, really. That is why he made all the planets, and most of the planets, you see, they are bulging in the middle, like all of us. Yeah, really, because they also rotate, you know, because always the first indication of prosperity is this one. Okay? So, people look at that is why I used to analyze people in terms of straight lines. I, I told you already? Oh, no. Huh? Yeah. I always see the people as straight lines or cylinders or spheres. Okay? Straight line will be something like this. Somewhere you have legs, somewhere you have uh, hands. But most of the time, you see a single line. We can see some of the people when they are walking. Okay, all this, you know, very you know, long time back in Telugu. I don't know when some of the people who may be knowing Telugu people. There was there used to be one comedian called Ramana Reddy. Okay, yeah, he was a straight line because he doesn't have any other organism except you know because one dimensional. You cannot put any other organ there. No? <laughs> okay, yeah. The other person, what I have seen, the other extreme sphere was one of the these uh, singers where <laughs> is it not sphere <laughs> you cannot see head only small legs and all that hidden somewhere <laughs> okay so this is the one so I mean, as engineering i am approximating that one as spheres you can see that okay and most of us are looking like this. Yeah. Okay, cylinders. So that's how I think you know we can see. We can look at the people and then think that okay, my God, straight lines, spherical particles, and cylinders. You know, you can also divide them and you can use them as catalysts if required. But this will be a very bad catalyst because packing is not possible so easily, right? Even this also is irregular. But that is what people use mainly in industry most of the time because you know extrusion how do you make catalyst they will identify what is the material and they will make as a paste and then they extrude through the extruder like noodles they make no noodles also extrusion, extrusion only so but they cut normally l by d equal to 1 normally it can be even 1.5 but most of the time l by d that means if diameter is 1 centimeter length also is 1 centimeter, that is the kind of cylinders. Those cylinders they pack. And uh, as Jahani was telling, you know, irregular, random packing when they do, you will not get uniform porosity or uniform void edge across any cross section. That means, when I take packet bed and cut at, the, at one point, I look there. So, the void edge may not be uniform when compared to another cut just above. That is why we take what is called superficial velocity. You know, why do you use superficial velocity? Now, by the way, what is superficial velocity? As you, I am talking as if all of you know what is superficial velocity. Yeah, what is superficial velocity? What is your name? I want to remember names. Abhijit, yeah. Abhijit, huh? oh, okay. I will equate with our Abhijit. Huh. Uh, velocity? Uh, velocity, you cannot divide anything. You have to take only volumetric flow rate and divide. Huh? Uh, which area you are talking? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Superficial velocity, correct. Superficial velocity is based on only empty cross section. Right? But in most of the packet beds, you need packing definitely for the catalytic reaction to take place, but in spite of that we always refer to superficial velocity. You know the reason why? 
the reason is exactly i know what is superficial velocity okay because it's empty cross section divided by you know yeah volumetric fluid divided by empty cross sectional area okay on the other hand if i put packing if it is not uniform void edge yet every point velocity is changing so i don't know how to correlate that so that is why a very good known parameter i will take i will express all my correlations in terms of only superficial velocity where we know the diameter of the column we know the volumetric flow rate so you can get superficial velocity if all the correlations are developed in that in that way then it is easy for us to use them otherwise the void edge will change depending on the packing the void edge also will change depending on uh, you know you have irregular packing or uh, even cylinders also it is not uniform only perfect spheres if you pack them that to maintaining l by d now this time not l by d d by dp diameter of the column divided by diameter of the particle minimum 10 and above if you use then only you will have the uniform void edge otherwise what will happen near the walls you will have more void edge at the center you will have less void edge but by increasing the diameter and putting only 100 particles for example across across one diameter 100 particles if you are able to put most of the non uh, you know non uniformities will disappear that's why we say assume uh, i mean the people who are using this theoretical equations all assumptions must they do assumption number 1 use i mean assume spherical particle you will never get spherical particle assume uniform void edge you will never get it assume no wall effects okay that is okay you can get it because depending on diameter of the particle and diameter of the tube you may be very near to that assumption right so that's why all that we do good so what is that i was telling now yeah so out of all this as engineer which one do you choose this only for just the gas solid catalytic reactions which is third one yeah why correct easiest to measure easiest to measure what is the difficult to measure out of all that surface area you will never get perfectly all the surface area that is available for the reaction because even when you are using different techniques right bet may give you some uh, good information but mercury porosimeter this that will not give will not cover the entire range of force okay so that is why like this you have to write all possible things and then choose one of the easiest right like for example if i have liquid liquid reaction which is the easiest way to express but you have in the volume both the things the reaction yeah okay very good the volume of the reaction you can express what is the most difficult to get interfacial area in fact estimation of interfacial areas are very very difficult same thing even with the gas liquid system where you have bubbles gas and then liquid as bubbles so then you will have again same problem so that is why you have to now understand that the first problem with heterogeneous system that comes is definition of rate itself okay and one example i can give you here gls when you have three three uh, phases most of the time people express as bubble free slurry volume moles converted per unit time per unit bubble free slurry volume that means again bubbles they may be of different sizes different uh, you know shapes you will not have again spherical bubble spherical bubbles all the time right and also you will not have uniform bubbles all the time so that is why they simply eliminate saying that okay let me express the rate for this as moles converted per unit volume of bubble free uh, yeah bubble free slurry that means solid volume plus liquid volume you but that is not the only unique way some people may say that only bubbles okay i think when you take uh, this time also we will tell in the next uh, semester we will actually derive an equation for the rates of uh, you know slurry bubble columns slurry bubble columns also sometimes called slurry columns or slurry bubble columns so there you will know it is most important thing is bubbles there first the mechanism when you just look into okay so that is what is happening now with all these 
rates, you have to choose one of the easiest one which you can measure and industry can use that very easily. So, as I told you again I am repeating, when you use this equation, then you will get directly weight of the catalyst. Okay? Or when you are using surface area, directly you will get surface area of the catalyst. Then you can convert, finally you, would, you should have only volume converted into some diameter and some height. That is what is ultimate no? shape of the reactor. Okay? Spherical reactors many people will not use very difficult to make again spherical reactors. Most of the time either tanks only right cylindrical, most of the time it is only cylindrical. So, that is why you have to choose a diameter, you have to choose a height. Good? Yeah. So, I think uh, I have covered, I wanted to cover many, but this time I think, uh, yeah. So, I thought of doing I think even batch reactor. So, next uh, tomorrow class, we will concentrate on contacting. So, this is the information what we have now. In fact, this is what we have to write also in the design expression when you are writing the balance. That is why I thought I will just say the definition of the rates and all that you know our key reactant always is A. That is why we will call you know minus R A. Right? So, we will use that information to now write design expressions for a batch and then continuous and uh, I also discuss with you when do you choose continuous, when do you choose batch. <laughs>